Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we have our guest, Dr. Haytham Al-Angari. He graduated with a BS from the biomedical engineering option of our department a long time ago. Yeah, a while ago. <laughs> and he obtained his PhD from Northwest University in 2005. Then he worked here for almost four years. And then also he started a long journey of exploring the world. He went to Northwestern for some time and then to it Italy. School of Sant Sant Anna. Anna. Okay. Sant Anna in Italy, where he did uh, some research projects. And finally, he was working with Khalifa University for two years now. Like almost three years, two almost and a half three years. years. Yeah. Okay. And he's now trying to establish collaboration with people here and join them or connect them to people in Khalifa University for some. To continue common, the common research interest, journey. Research yeah. interest and... Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, happy to be back for the second time presenting work, my work. Uh, it was like a year ago when I did the first presentation about the latest work that I was doing with the colleague at Khalifa University, Biomedical Engineering. And since I was finishing my work with the, with the guys there, I wanted to like link people here from the biomedical engineering group to uh, uh, do or to continue the research that we have there, come up with idea and like continue uh, our research work. So for that, uh, the talk would be basically uh, some ideas about uh, research work, either that was started at Khalifa, uh, the ones that I have uh, from my own and I would like to like share, and whatever uh, like points that we'd like to discuss. So. Whenever you have, uh, like, if you have questions, plus, uh, just stop me and, and ask or comment. Give me your comments as we go throughout the, uh, the presentation. I'll, I'll first start with my interest in the old new interest in the uh, sleep apnea uh, detection. And that uh, project, project one that I, I want to propose is using dental appliance to detect the upper way uh, uh, activity, the muscle activity in the case of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Um, sleep apnea is cessation or near of cessation of breathing during sleep, and it is assumed to uh, affect around 4% uh, of the population, although researchers know that this number is underestimated, especially that is the gold standard for diagnosing sleep apnea is the sleep lab, the uh, polysomnography, where the subject has to spend the whole night in the sleep lab and lots of data or of signals need to be collected, around 12 or even 16 uh, data. And the uh, sleep specialists need to look uh, throughout all these data to uh, give uh, sleep apnea uh, index that uh, give a diagnostic uh, number or figure for having sleep apnea or not, and the severity of the sleep apnea. Uh, sleep apnea ha has either central sleep apnea part or obstructive sleep apnea part. In the central case, the commands from the uh, uh, nervous system, central nervous system, doesn't go to move the, uh, the respiratory uh, system. While in the obstructive, there are commands from the central nervous system, but there is an obstruction uh, in the upper airway of the respiratory system. And uh, researchers found that uh, due to this collapse, that these uh, muscles like the genoglossus here and the uh, soft uh, palate muscles show either low or, uh, or diminished activity of their uh, elect electrical activity, uh, even in wakefulness for a, a patient with sleep apnea. So my goal, my intention is to design a simple and low-cost system that uh, uh, implies uh, using a dental appliance to detect the activity of these main uh, upper airways muscles and see how they go during sleep and correlate this, this result, this activity with the results of the um, uh, polysomnography. So we see how good our system compared to uh, polysomnography. What, what type, what is this here about the relationship 
the hypothesis is that the main cause for the obstruction is the drop in the activity of uh, these muscles. Because when you have these muscles, during the day, through some literature, it showed that they drop. And we want to study them throughout the night. So we propose that you, you would see diminished activity during the apnea uh, uh, epochs. And then maybe a burst of activity again. And we would like to, to study this. And that was an, uh, why I say it's an old and new, because I was trying to have this running while I was here in, in Jeddah. But due to the, some difficulties and even some uh, complication about designing a uh, uh, completely electronic uh, uh, appliance was hard at that time. But nowadays, we have this uh, technology of the flexible electronics, and the electronics are getting smaller in size. I'll show you some examples of how people have developed these kind of uh, uh, appliances, but for different causes, and we'll see how we benefit from that. So this is, uh, yeah. This small percent of the population, is it dependent on which part of the world we live in? The number was given from the Western world. And uh, like, this is from the US, but also in other uh, Western countries, you see something similar. And the researchers, they like, propose that this is a general um, case, like you can apply it to the whole world. And even, it could be even worse with the development uh, Devel uh, developing countries where you have problem with the obesity, for example. Uh, Over-obese uh, uh, subjects have problem with, with the upper airways. They have lots of pressure on their upper airways, which, like, increase... You know, I'm asking because I used to suffer from this when I live in a, in a high... Attitude. attitude. But in Jeddah, for example, for me... Things I'm are getting... Uh, like. It, it, it m might not be a sleep apnea. It might not be a sleep apnea problem. It might be another problem. So it might be not diagnosed as sleep apnea. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Usually it is not that related to the altitude. Maybe one would have some some problem with the, with the less oxygen, but not like uh, uh, that, that's what I assume. But we, we would like, like to... Is it related to allergies? It is related like uh, to smoking, uh, alcohol, uh, because these drop the, the, uh, the uh, performance of the muscles themselves, especially the obstructive sleep apnea. So these affect the activity of the muscle. And the, these are considered like high uh, or risk factor for the sleep apnea. Anyways, this is an example of having an appliance with electronics inside it. This work was done by uh, researchers in Georgia Tech. And the goal of this was to uh, control uh, uh, wheelchair for, for uh, uh, people with high level spinal cord spinal cord injury. So basically the, the goal here is to have that uh, circuit tracing the direction of the tongue. And you have the circuit transmitting the data to a receiver on the wheelchair to drive the, uh, the wheelchair. And this was uh, placed in that small appliance. That was in 2012. With the technology getting uh, like smarter and smarter in having uh, the flexible electronics. This appliance, uh, this work just uh, published last year uh, in sensors from a group in Taiwan. And that appliance was meant to be a treatment for the sleep apnea. Sometimes for like minimal cases, not severe cases, like uh, light cases of, of sleep apnea, you could improve the, the apnea, reduce the apnea by putting the appliance to open, to enlarge the upper airway. Especially for those who have some anat uh, uh, like narrow an anatomical uh, upper airway. So this helped pushing that. And that was the reason for this. But the electronics here was to measure or to trace the, uh, the tongue pressure. This matrix 
was to measure the distribution of the tank pressure during the night. The group just finished building the electronics. They didn't do any clinical tests. So this is not for diagnostic, this is for treatment, and it is not looking at the upper airway muscles. Uh, that why this could be a chance for um, our group to work with different people in at Khalifa or uh, Kaus, for example. That's why I asked Dr. Ahmed the other day about that uh, uh, presenter from Kaus, uh, Atif Shamim, who presented a work on flexible electronics that we might like contact to see whether we can have someone who builds this. But it won't be just the electronic part that interests us. Uh, in this project, are they stimulating the muscles? This is, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, one second, one second. Okay. This, uh, there is, this is a passive treat. This is for treat, treating apnea, and this is a very passive method. It's just the upper airways, the normal upper, uh, sorry, the normal appliance to open, to enlarge the upper airway. Mechanical. It's a very passive mechanical response or, or solution for the problem. But while it is doing that, they want to see how good it is performing through tracing the lung pressure throughout the night. Mike. This is the proposed clinical work. It might cause a problem itself, no? In terms of like... Uh, Being there and it's, 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 it might cause a problem while, you, while you're having it there? No, 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 no. No, no, no. it's, no. it's uh, non-invasive. Uh, it's just like having this sheet. There is uh, like... Uh, good you question. Because it, no, 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 no. It is built on the appliance itself. So it's like... A sheet that is on the appliance, and as the tongue is touching this, it is it conti continuously measure the pressure of the tongue, and here is the good part: you have the electronic part, and it has a memory. This one, for example, has a continuous transmitter receiver because they want to take the action immediately. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, what is the Swallowing the the, the, the the sheet itself. Yes, so even if it just drops a little further down the. It is uh, implanted on the appliance itself. It is part of the appliance. Connected to the, the teeth. Connected to the uh, so the, the teeth. Yes, the exactly. It's hanging on the teeth. Yeah. It go, okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, again, good questions. This is the intention of this talk. In fact, for example, this. This is the second version of that system, where the first version, they had this electronics at the top of the head. But because of that paralyzed person might like have no control in his uh, head movement, it might uh, fall down or drops and so on. But the reason for them to, to pick the dental appliance, because it is connected to the teeth. So it is fixed there. What if you buy it, 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 uh, maybe you didn't try, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this. Maybe you didn't try a dental appliance before. Taqweem Asnan. Taqweem Raqib ala asnanak. Wow. Okay? So, um, uh, 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 but, uh, do you think that you will extend your work to stimulating the, the muscle? Let's detect and then see how it correlates with the apnea. Then we can propose. It, uh, go ahead. Uh, have, uh, only, uh, I didn't see your contact because we have a sleep apnea project already running in the department. Okay. Uh, we, we do have that. Uh, I didn't see your email. Will you give it again? Uh, you are welcome to have the email. And the reason like, I'm here is to keep these good contacts for research. Okay. We'll talk about this later on, Isha. Uh, well, we can talk about Dr. Ahmed about this. Like, uh, like the plan is to rejoin the department, inshallah. Ah, okay. So, uh, if, if we have people who are interested in research, this is good news to me, in fact. Okay. So, we'll see. Uh, right. The other, so, but for this one, they didn't need to do that continuous transmission. So, they have a memory here. And the, the whole uh, all-night data was saved or supposed to be saved in the memory. And then transmitted to the station here for the processing. For these two circuitry, you, you need to have that power management, 
where you charge your, your battery uh, with, with external uh, uh, RF coil. So this is part of, of, the, uh, of the design. Now what we have, what we can do in terms of research. And uh, I, I started the version zero of it, if you like, with a friend from School of Dentistry. That's why our talk with the medical school is important. Uh, but things moved very slow at that time. But what we managed to do is have the appliance that doesn't fall down. It is fixed on the teeth. And we had, uh, the, because we are measuring, or supposed to measure the, the, uh, the muscle activity, EMG, we need electrodes. So we're thinking of what type of electrodes, where they touch, and how we measure their activity. So that was version zero of it. They made an uh, uh, appliance for me. We had different type of electrode type and positioning. And we were having an EMG amplifier, a bio pack, sitting there, no one was using it. What wire? What wire? And we had the wire, and we wanted to check the quality of the signal. Because after all, we want to see, even if you want to have it all embedded and all uh, wire, uh, wireless uh, uh, connected, you need to see the first the quality of the signal. What type of electrode, where do you place the electrodes, um, uh, bipolar, uh, unipolar, and so on. So this is uh, part of, of the work. What we need to have is the amplifier, the transmitter, either uh, immediate uh, or instantaneous tr transmission. Maybe in our phase now, we don't need to do this. Maybe we do this when we need to take an action when it controls a CPAP, or maybe an old uh, idea of uh, having a stimulus of the muscle itself. So you send some burst of electrical uh, pulses to activate the muscle. Here you have that immediate transmission or instantaneous trans transmission when you want to take an action. How that do you know this activity is uh, related or correlated to the... Good question. You, you need to have this when you have the model completed, uh, running alongside with uh, a polysomnography study. So, uh, so we have to have this with some uh, technology here. And we need to talk to our uh, friends, or we hope to have some friends at KAUST who might be interested, or maybe external collaboration to have something like that. Uh, but this is one, one side of the problem. The other side is the BME with the dentist, students from the BME, master student maybe, master student supervising, uh, supervising two uh, final year BS students from our, with those, the similar group uh, from the dentist who are trying that version, regenerate version zero with maybe instead of appliance, you can have a brace, dental brace uh, that is available in the market. I remember that it has some fixed size, small, medium, and, and, and large. So you can have this, pa uh, have the electrode passing through the appliance, touching certain muscles and using the external amplifier to check quality of the signal. What type of electrodes? So this is, th that could be like a small project of the big project. What type of electrodes? Where they are placed, unipolar or bipolar? All this issue can be done as small project for masters and bachelor degree projects. So everyone is happier, here and there. And once we have this, we can go back to the electronics and make sure that they are having the good feedback from us about the location of the electrodes and how you, uh, I remember that was a problem or an issue in, in our case, is how to have that metal wire connected to our cable. So there is no soldering here. You need to do some crimping or, or some good contact between the, the electrodes and the circuitry. So again, it's a design issue that we can like look at and evaluate. And once we do this, well, all, all is the BME engineers, professors, students, math, researchers, master students and bachelor degree students, controlling this and looking after all this, they go to the last uh, stage where we have to do the uh, 
sleep apnea or the uh, uh, polysomnography. So you have this applied on, like you are collecting all these 16 data, you will ask the, the patient to have that appliance and you are collecting the, the activity of the muscles. You may start with an oximeter in the beginning. With it. Give you a good atom indication. With it. The, the issue is, and once we have this, we have the sleep apnea data, the polysomnography data, oh, 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 biomedical signal processing thing will start. How good is the sleep, uh, the, uh, uh, the upper airways only with the uh, uh, pulse oximetry uh, uh, data only without all the other data, how good they are. And we can do the machine learning thing and, and everything from there. So it is like I thought that with the new technology in designing these coming, that improvement with the flexible electronics and having people around us in, at Kaos. I know someone from Khalifa, not very sure if they can design this or not, but I can reconnect, uh, contact them and see. So uh, this is uh, project one, but it's a uh, heavy project one and hopefully we'll see people interested in, in working uh, uh, in part of this, uh, of this project. Any comment or, or question regarding that one? Okay, so we move to uh, uh, project two. Okay, this project uh, about the, uh, our work of last year, about the drone pilot and the identification that we had the offline work. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, recently published in IEEE uh, transaction on uh, uh, forensics and information, information forensics, uh, forensics and security. And uh, that was the offline of it. The goal of that work was, can we identify who is the pilot from the data coming from uh, the RC controller? And we were having this uh, pitch roll, yaw, and uh, thrust data from the RC, uh, digitized and fed back from the drone to the ground station. And uh, we tried like up to 20 pilots. Although we have also other data from the drone about the orientation of the drone itself and the altitude and so on, like other nine data uh, available. And we were having the, the, the pilots uh, traveling uh, or flying the, the drone in three trajectory, uh, vertical, horizontal, and random. I, ex I talked about this project later on, but ha this is how the data look and the differences between different uh, pilots. And we use a random forest classifier. This is uh, a machine learning uh, computer engineering issue that we might have some of the computer engineers also interested in. So what we want to do as a next step is to make to, to verify this uh, in the online uh, classifier model. So what we need to do is, uh, this is the, the offline accuracy reach 90%. And in the online, we'll have the issue of the memory size. We'll have the, uh, especially with, with the random forest. And we'll have an issue about the speed, how quick the identification of the pilot should be compared to the speed of the processor and the test data, how many times we need to check the decision. Do we need to have like a majority voting and, and so on? And the majority voting will affect the speed of taking the decision and so on. Uh, again, the issue about changing the data that you get from the same subject or other subject, the inter and intra subject uh, differences, how they look. This is a collaboration, this if it, if, it, if it works, this will be a collaboration with our brother uh, Abdul Hadi Shofan, the first author of the offline analysis from, from Khalifa. And he is interested in collaboration. But from my side, what I see it as biomedical engineer is to have the know-how of building the online classifier. So we, I want to have the students working on building an online classifier. It's easy to say we can do it, it's easy, but once you implement, you'll have the technical problem. And I'm interested in having uh, the students, me and the students, in fact, knowing how to build and the issues, the problem that are related to the online class, different type of classifiers. And 
as we are doing this, we have in mind the uh, uh, specs of the environment that our brother from Khalifa is having. So we can simulate that drone microprocessor uh, environment, or maybe, maybe we can have the students visiting there, or we, maybe we can borrow the drone from there for like a couple of feet testing here. So this is the idea of taking the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the drone project, the drone pilot identification project, one step ahead in doing or building the online classification. Big difference in the accuracy. Big difference. This is like we had some good uh, back and forth uh, communication with the reviewers. And in fact, they gave us not just headache, but good points, in fact, to, to discuss and look at. This is the issue of uh, having unauthorized pilots uh, identify as, I, uh, as uh, unauthorized. It is not like when we thought about... Uh, exactly, yes. So uh, our interest was not... Uh, it could be an interest of identify, identifying each pilot. But in real case scenario for security, you would like authorize this drone for one or two pilots while anyone else shouldn't use that drone so like we have this model we, we, we refuse to respond it should have exactly it should be some it should have its own built-in uh, algorithm that control the the situation an autopilot that takes on and does certain things so this is in the case of one authorized pilot, and we are having 20, so it, we are having uh, 19 unauthorized, but in the model, we are just training one unauthorized. So in our model, we're having one authorized and one unauthorized. We're having very low accuracy. If you just increase the unauthorized in the trained model, here, for example, it jumps to around mid-70. If you have three unauthorized and one authorized. And this is when you have the other 16. How, are, how is the accuracy in detecting that the, the 16 are unauthorized? It was around like the uh, 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 75%. And as you are increasing the number, you are getting better and better results. So you need to have some balance between the number of unauthorized and the and also this is not shown here but it should be also an issue the number of trial for the authorized to counter for his intra subject changes maybe you need to take him at different times different days just to like let the the, the drone or the the model trained that this is the one who is authorized so this is a, an issue that we would like to uh, discover or look at in the the online classifier. Couldn't you do the whole thing on a simulator? Do you need really an actual drone to do this? Uh, the the issue here is uh, uh, it it will be the the simulator. Uh, this is uh, stage one. But again, about the practical issue of how long does it take to process the issue of the uh, memory exactly. No, no, I'm not saying. I say, instead of going, flying a real UAV, صح. let the pilot work on a simulator. صحيح, صحيح. صح. But he will have a joystick and he will control something that looks like a real drone. صحيح. Exactly, yes. In this case, you will not run into trouble of flying a real, uh, real drone. But, but most, uh, the behavior of the pilot will be very realistic because he is responding to a realistically looking thing. Sahih. And even if he is, uh, because this is supposed to be the case, as uh, the drone goes uh, out of the sight of, of the vision for the pilot, he needs to look at the monitor. So based on what he sees in the monitor, monitor he will control his, his action. So uh, you need to like deal with having the drone away from you and dealing with the joystick only looking at the simulator, looking at the, the, the video of the, the drone uh, at, at uh, that spot, uh, 
the location of it, the orient orientation of it. So yes, you need, but you want to verify this with especially yeah. the speed of the processing, the speed of the communication, because you're gonna send this action again. So you need to work with the, the real case scenario. Even when we take the, uh, when we are talking about the online classifier here, we are not talking, we're gonna implement this. Uh, the goal is to, to have this running on the, on the drone. We want to build it in an environment similar to the drone environment. And why not, if it's there, we, we can give the try of not having the drone taking an action, but testing all this issue about the, the, the speed of processing, the communication speed, and so on, without taking an action, just taking the, the results, save it on the microprocessor, or maybe, yeah, save it in the microprocessor will be easier, and then as you get the drone, you can have all these data available to you for the analysis. So, it is not that you cannot, it is not essential to do it now. Yes, that's what I mean. I mean why you, I'm not saying you cannot, I'm saying why, why. Uh, I guess the point here from brother Dr. Ahmed is, we can do lots of things without the need of get, having the real drone available. Okay. So even without collaboration, we can do something. But collaboration, since we are having the data available, the real data available, that we need to train yeah. the model with, we need to, uh, to have the permission from our colleague, because these data were collected from his work. So, and why not, if it, I yeah. The, the, the point is, you can do a lot of data collection by using a simulator than by using the, uh, the drone. Because you can do it by sitting in a lab and do the whole thing. Sorry, the, the sorry. Uh, but uh, there will be the issue, the subjective issues about controlling your actual drone. Like, uh, again, it is when you have the real thing, you are worried of losing it. You are worried, worried of having, hitting, having it hitting some, some wall or, or some, then it will change. This subjective, as, yeah. As, as an initial. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I agree, yes. Far enough using a simulator. Sorry, 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 sorry. Right. That was also an idea for collaboration. Other thing with biomedical engineering department from Khalifa, we worked with uh, getting the heart, heart rate variability signal from the Doppler ultrasound uh, for uh, fetal monitoring. So it is about the fetus, and we want to check the uh, the heart rate variability of the fetus it will be good for like some diagno early diagnostic of some problem and for that usually the heart rate is monitored through the uh, uh, cardio tocography uh, that use the the uh, doppler ultrasound doppler ultrasound uh, check or like measure the the mechanical motion of the heart the, the heart, heart wall uh, but it is not that reliable in the heart rate variability because of the signal changing due to maybe the fetus movement and also the, the other source of noise. For example, the valve motion itself, not just the wall, the valve motion as the fetus develop would be also a source for noise that is added to the signal. Uh, and usually in these machines, they have the simple autocorrelation method that is like trying to estimate the beats and from that get the, an, uh, uh, a mean number of the heart, heart rate. And it is low in, like when we looked at the data, it is low in the heart rate variability, the changes in the heart rate that also have some, some good information about the health of the fetus or the, or the adults. And there is a competition between the ultrasound and the old new uh, uh, maternal uh, abdomen ECG that is uh, used uh, as a source for the fetus ECG, and you do some cancellation of that signal to get the fetus ECG. While this is getting more accurate results as the technology is improving hardware and software. So what we thought of is trying to get up, uh, get uh, some trials in improving the heart rate variability from the Doppler ultrasound and see how it goes. So uh, what this, we... This ECG is applied from the mother? 
this EC, these uh, ECG are applied on the mother uh, abdomen, okay. and they are, and we have the mother. Uh, exactly, and you do some some smart cancellation to get the fetus ECG, and with the technology and this improvement in the software, signal processing software, things are getting better and better in uh, the accuracy, especially at uh, that the accuracy in both cases. If you want to compare it to real fetus. Uh, usually, or like uh, at least like the, the, the work that I, I looked at and worked with, when you talk about heart rate variability is the RR interval. So it is you detect the R and you get the delta R, if you like. So the difference between... The stability of the heart rate. Exactly, yes. In time, sometimes they, they take the 1 over R. So I, I, I saw some research that work at the 1 over R. And this is related in the literature. This is related to the autonomic nervous system, yes. the low frequency and the high frequency, uh, high frequency components of the RR. So this is this is but what. No, 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 no. It's signal processing of the RR interval. And uh, uh, so what what we have as as data and. Uh, people are welcome to like look at and share and like if they have ideas is the ECG fetus, e fetal ECG through the that mother cancellation uh, uh, technique to get just the fetus we have these data and we have the Doppler uh, ultrasound signal from the machine this is a 1D that shows the variation to do due to the movement of the heart wall and the, the valves, the, the region, the whole region there. And um, this is not processed. Uh, one kilohertz signal of Doppler. Uh, the center frequency is one kilohertz. It is sampled at one kilohertz. It is, it, it is processed, sorry. In, in this sense, you are getting just the Doppler. So this is related. So it is not the high frequency thing. It is just the Doppler sampled as so it is ready for you to use so this is related to that motion what is usually the signal transmitted uh, the in terms of a frequency in terms of frequency frequency range uh, uh, it depends on that ultrasound machine but it, we have these numbers for you if you if you have you're, control over that uh, I, I assume you can, but maybe that was the optimum to get the the best Doppler that is related. Maybe, maybe, M maybe you need optimum to. For, for their old measurements. Now, what you are trying to measure might be not optimal for that. Maybe, maybe this is an issue also that to look at. But it's with the current. The, the goal is to optimize for their, their uh, routine. It might be worse for you. Exactly. And, uh, and that's why it is like a blind search for us, for, for improvement. Not only the frequency and the, and the depth, the, the power of it, uh, the position of it. I have no idea on, on how it, is, it was uh, positioned in terms of uh, the abdomen of the mother. Uh, was it fixed, completely fixed or not? We have the details of... Sound Check. Done on, uh, but no, no, no. But the the, the intention, the the intention, that was the intention for. It. So maybe they optimized, or they optimized based on their uh, best at, at at that time, uh, was to get the ultrasound related to the the cardiac activity in terms of beat and in terms of valve motion, as we gonna see. So they sub they supposed to like did do their best in getting the, uh, the best uh, arrangement to get the results. Uh, so we have, yeah. Ultrasound works like radar. So you transmit the signal and you receive the echo, and usually they do autocorrelation between the transmitted signal and the echo to get the information. Okay. Is, is autocorrelation already done on this, or this is just uh, I, I, I don't assume that autocorrelation was done here. It is just the, the, 
received signal. So you have the signal. RF signal. So you have the raw data no. recorded. This is the received one. Uh, yeah, uh, the received raw data, yes. yes. Uh, one minute signal, so each record is composed, uh, is containing one minute reading of, of ECG, uh, synchronized with, with this, okay? And we, uh, we want to try the, uh, the AMD kurtosis method. The AMD uh, empirical mode decomposition, uh, like, uh, decompose the signal into its basics, uh, uh, oscillatory behavior or mode, and the kurtosis, that was our proposal. And the kurtosis is good in detecting changes in the amplitude. So with, when, you, when you apply uh, the kurtosis with certain window on the signal, like what we did here, it, it varies the signal, it, it filter out the random, the, uh, variability and add up the the continuous changes so it is helping in like filtering out these noise and like giving us some uh, peaks related to the activity so we thought of trying uh, this as as a uh, a method compared to the and compared to the uh, known traditional uh, autocorrelation to de detect the beats of the heart and this is our results so we have this embedded uh, kurtosis and we have this AF, uh, uh, autocorrelation function. Uh, we have the mismatch error and we have the mean successive beat error. The mismatch re re refer to the uh, miss number of beats, whether our method is adding more beats or missing uh, some beats. That's why we said mismatch between this and the, uh, the reference. Our reference we pick our reference to be the one got from the, um, uh, the mother abdominal signal, the, e the ECG, fetus ECG. So we compare to that reference between the autocorrelation and the uh, EMD kurtosis. And we see the, uh, the, the mismatch er error when you have negative, meaning that our method is adding more beats than the reference. When it's positive means that uh, so, sorry, it's the opposite. Yes. Uh, and when it's positive, that, uh, that uh, our method is adding. And, and we see that our is having less mismatch error than the autocorrelation. Also in the difference, so that was in the range of uh, plus and minus five compared to the, to the other one. Also for the mean successive beat, that, that measure that when you have beat to beat, Compared to the reference beat to beat, you want to see the difference between that RR and this RR. So you get the, the mean difference between, for each correct RR measured between our method and the reference. You are getting the, the mean of that difference. No, 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 no. Uh, the fetus rate is around 300 uh, beat per, per second. Yeah. Yeah. Per minute. Per, per minute. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, no, no, uh, let me correct. It is the rate, the rate, the time is around 300 milliseconds. So, sorry, millisecond. The, the, the delta RR is around... Uh, uh, so, around 180... Beats per second. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. It's way yeah. higher than than. Yeah. So high. So high. And and uh, and this change. There is another. It, it, it's high. And the thing here that it 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 increase with uh, gestational age as the, the fetus develop. And, and, uh, and that's why we looked at the effect of uh, the, uh, the method in the early and late. Because in the late, you have other noise coming from the valves. Is early and is early? This, is the early, this, is, this is the age. So we have the cutoff as the 30, 32 weeks. 
less than 32 weeks we considered it early and more than 32 we considered it late and uh, so so we considered the, this uh, issue in in, uh, in in the analysis 40 days weeks weeks Forty days. <laughs> so again so we are we are seeing also less error in the differences between the RR detected from the reference and our method. This is some good example, to be frank, where the red is the, uh, th this is the heart rate variability that I mean, the, the delta RR or the, the difference between the RR. Red is the reference and um, black is the estimated. So we have this for the kurtosis, the AMD kurtosis, and the other one for the AF, and also this is the case for the kurtosis and the AF for the early and late. These are the good ones. You would have also very bad ones for both methods, to, to be frank. So there are some issues to, to, to be improved. What's what the axis the x axis? The x axis is time. Time, time. Two minutes. Uh, 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 this number of hours. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These are points, not time, points. So this is R number two, or RR number one, RR number two, RR number three. So these are the number of, of RR points. Okay. So Why is it spiking in the air? Uh, uh, okay. If you do an AF, this is uh, like the experience that I found, without, we had an adaptive window for the AF to change. If you don't do this, you will have lots of fluctuation, lots of spikes, because of that effect of... Do you do it in a moving window fashion? You, you are doing it in a moving window, but if, if you don't do it with adaptive window change, so the, the window size, it's changing. If you don't add this, as even like we got some method that was proposed by... Yeah. So these so, are the very mismatched points. Sah. These ones are when you miss the, the ones, and then the window needs time to adapt to go back to the actual one. If you don't, this is the trade-off. If you don't do this, it will be even worse. So we, and, and this was proposed by uh, some other group, so we got that one that has improvement, at least in their literature, they showed improvement compared without the adaptive window. And we said we want to have the, the, the uh, automized one. Have you thought you using some wavelet analysis and remove some components to wavelet analysis? Like the, the comparison the I, I did, uh, I, the denoising was in the first stage here. But we, there, there is a room of improvement in any point, and this is why we are throwing this to you. Uh, this paper was out in like uh, September 2017, so we can look at it and see uh, what was done and how you improved. Uh, maybe you can come up with, with technique different than all what is listed to improve the heart rate variability. And th then you, you would like add something, something new to the uh, community and they will like this improvement because you don't need any 12 lead thing to get the uh, mother ECG and do all this concession is just a uh, simple uh, probe and you do some quick measurement and, and so on. Uh, the other, uh, so. The ultrasound is regularly done already. Exactly, it is available in the, in the clinic, so um, uh, it might be like uh, a, a more uh, feasible solution. In, in many cases, uh, it's done regularly for pregnant women. So I, so I, so I, so I. So, trouble. These are different cases. These points represent different cases. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, uh, I have uh, something uh, experience for me where uh, I was in the hospital and they did some measurement. For okay. Me, okay. Uh, and they found some results. Uh, they repeated it and they repeated it and they got the same results. Uh, but the, the clinical, the clinical doctor. Mm. Uh, Disagree with uh, with the ultrasound, and he was right. 
so different people might give you different signals. Uh, well, this is this is the case in the medical field, like. But a well-educated team will work together, meaning that the 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 technicians on the ultrasound will do the experiments properly, and then they would give it to the uh, clinician who is exp expert in reading the signal, and based on what he sees, he he's supposed to give something that supposedly close to the case. But uh, like we have some. Uh, this the, this might happen like uh, uh, every now and then with with uh, like anyone. So it it might happen. But uh, as as I s said that what we managed to do is to lower. This is the the Blunt Altman uh, plot. So we managed to lower the mean RR. This is our mean RR compared to the reference compared to the autocorrelation. So we managed to reduce that, but for the heart rate variability uh, assessed by uh, the standard deviation and the uh, uh, root mean uh, square uh, successive difference, we are still seeing variability. So the variable compared to the actual the reference. So we are still having good. We did good in the global search of the beats. As you recall, that we had less mismatch number of beats. But we need to have maybe, and here, here are the suggestions, maybe we need to have a local search uh, uh, goes together with the global to correct the R position because you are having almost the same number of R's, but the, the actual location of the R is not uh, properly detected. Uh, maybe we apply some adaptive window size because to that kurtosis because in the kurtosis we were having fixed window size here we can play with the adaptive window size to change as we need we can play with that or maybe we can do some alternative method that we might come up with um, uh, wavelet could be another option uh, the, the thing is uh, when we did this analysis because we don't have prior knowledge of what exactly the best window size and for the kurtosis for the search of the peak and so on and so forth and even which uh, level of the uh, empirical mode decomposition we cheated if you liked the word from the actual true reference so we played with some adjustment of all these changes uh, uh, parameters the window size the the different level of the decomposition to improve the uh, or to reduce the errors so not it is not cheating it is improving so uh, the, what i'm saying is the good thing since you know the reference you are not shooting in the dark you know exactly what's what's what, where it's supposed to be so it it helps you uh, adjusting fine-tuning if you like fine-tuning that, that this is the point please Sah. Sah. And uh, by the way, you would expect a uh, difference between the mechanical and the electrical activity. They won't uh, coincide no. because of that delay, the mechanical and the electrical. Uh, and this is normal. But the issue, uh, the thing here is that delay is supposed to be almost fixed with your, with your method. Yeah. You, uh, uh, the, uh, if you optimize, if you like. Then you are saying, um, I'm getting closer to a method that have a better estimation of the heart rate variability. So again, uh, this, these data are available and brother Ahsan Kandikor from Biomedical Engineering, Khalifa University, is welcoming collaboration. So we have for the normal cases, like around 50 ECG, ready fetus ECG and Doppler, and we, uh, all what we discussed was for the normal cases. The abnormal cases, when you have lots of jumping of the R peaks, this is another issue and another improvement that one might think of. We are having something around also 20 abnormal cases. Can you share those data? Uh, I, we can provide some samples and through agreement with Ahsan, uh, I assume that he is welcoming because uh, with Khalifa, some, some problem there is Sometimes they lack uh, um, researchers. 
and uh, uh, postdocs who really uh, into the research. So if you tell the, the people there, you know what, we cal collaborate based on this, of course they will help and we share, but uh, I, I know that they would like to, to have their name also available in the, in the publication. And for that, for us, yeah, yeah please. <laughs> I don't care who they put there, right? But okay. they, they are willing to collaborate, not just like having the name, but uh, I know Ahsan Kandikor, for example, he is uh, interesting in collaboration. And maybe me ha uh, being here, being the link, uh, at least uh, as a start, and then continues. So this is also available. Uh, just quickly, again, about not just, since we are having these data, the, the, the timing of the R and the ultrasound, I didn't work myself with this, but there are also room of improvement about the timing of the valve opening and closing. This was dropping with significant correlation with age compared to the known uh, tie index. In the tie index, instead of the filling time, you are having the ejection time. Uh, that was used for the adult, but for the fetus, we saw this. And this are the, the red ones are uh, the normal ones, while the abnormal ones here are not following. And for some of them here, especially for the early, they are having very low value. So this could be an indicator of some abnormality, uh, which like as, uh, make us assume that the filling time is more important for the fetus because for the, uh, uh, the, heart, for the blood circulation of the fetus, it has to go through uh, mother uh, placenta. So there will be a delay in that process, and that's why the, filling time, the ventricle filling time is important for the fetus. And this was like published in a conference in 2000, 2016. This is Ahsan work. But uh, currently, the, the work that I'm, I'm doing is like doing some, uh, which I'm not really interested in, the medical statistics, some numbers about these intervals, and see how they uh, change with some type of abnormalities. So what was done is like the data is something like that, that you have for the uh, uh, Doppler ultrasound, and here's the detailed signal after wavelet de decomposition of the uh, level two of the wavelet, and here is the R. So based on that R, there, is, there, there was some machine learning, basically what they tried, the support vector machine and hidden Markov model, and they add to it, as a second work, uh, uh, cluster, the effect of clustering, because they found that there are some similarity between segments that start and end with the R's, so they managed to look at six different clusters. And for each cluster, they have their own uh, machine learning uh, support vector machine hidden Markov model to uh, classify whether it is uh, mitral opening, mitral closing, uh, uh, aorta opening, and aorta closing. So with the clustering, they managed to improve these two, the AC and the MO, like uh, 10% with adding the clustering. And Ahsan is thinking, uh, he's working with someone also from uh, electrical engineering in, at Khalifa who is good in uh, advanced signal processing. So they were thinking of deep learning, which is the advanced uh, new, neural network uh, uh, ma machine, machine, machine learning. So deep learning Well, we are having, here, we are not having the whole record. We are having each segment is one record. Still? Oh, well, uh, we, we could discuss this with him. That was his proposal. You need lots, lots of... In, 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 in what number? Like... Okay, so... Uh, maybe we can like discuss with him why he proposed this. Uh, uh, but the layer, the neural network can be hundred or more. Okay. They're okay. More than that. Okay. But again, there are other methods that might be interesting, interesting to that. What Ahsan proposed, but we might think of other method to to improve the results. And again, these are with no abnormal cases. 
when you try the abnormal cases, it gets worse due to that uh, variation on the RR. Uh, and other abnormality maybe even in the uh, uh, morphology or the shape of the signal, the, the ECG itself. Uh, what about just classifying normal and abnormal? And why don't you try but, uh, but here it's not the issue of normal and abnormal. Where is the timing of the valve? Because with the timing of the valve, uh, you, you can like, know about the circulation. You would say this... But which, which abnormality? This information might detect certain abnormality, delay in certain filling or ejection time. So because all these give some indicators about certain uh, abnormal, abnormal case. So even these details might, might be useful in, in just saying normal, normal or abnormal. No, no, it's okay. Okay. So uh, like I thought of sharing all these points. Uh, I, I finish here. I stop here. Uh, like talking about that from the beginning just to uh, uh, recap that we were talking about the sleep apnea uh, multi uh, disability project where we can work in different team and uh, the uh, um, the online classifier for the uh, the drone work and also here the data available for the improvement of the heart rate variability of the fetus and also the detection of the timing for the, um, uh, for the valves. Um, other thing that like, also we can share, talking to uh, uh, the friend from Chicago, who I supposed to, like, or the, the plan was to, to work with during this year. So he proposed that we continue collaboration. The problem with his work that the funding company stopped funding his project although they have some promising data, as he was saying, because of having an indoor uh, like technology that they work on. But the data is available. And the data is having AF uh, activity from the, the, the heart muscle. And the, they try to ablate the proper ones. So they get signal processing act, uh, information about certain uh, grid of, of the heart muscle and they, they want to, to pick the right ones to do the ablation. The, the uh, high frequency ablation is the one that treats or one of the treatment of the AF, atrial fibrillation. So maybe we can like talk about this is uh, the company that was planning to support was Johnson & Johnson. But they thought of going, uh, going with some, some work that they handled it themselves. But like we can check if we can get some of his data for the signal processing work. Like what, once you have the link, then you can uh, communicate and, and, and work and collaborate. The area of right? They generate atrial fibrillation. In that uh, animal model, they have the mesh of the electrodes around the heart, and they uh, generate atrial fibrillation through pacemakers. So they g intentionally generate uh, atrial fibrillation. On a live animal? On a live poor dog. And then they try to uh, pick, pick the ones, the parts of the heart that they do, they focus on the, uh, the, the treatment, which is the uh, high frequency ablation, to stop. It's like the, the theory is like, when you have the uh, atrial fibrillation, like it goes in circle, like uh, you, the, the atrium is not controlled by the, uh, the uh, sinoatrial uh, node, it, it generates its own. So they want to pick the right ones, the, the right spots, where they spot the, this uh, recurrence or regeneration of the, 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 the action potential. So they, they can kill uh, atrial fibrillation they for that. Sorry. So they generate the atrial fibrillation so that they, they try to solve it. From our side, we, it will, after, yeah, after the experiment, they, they get rid of the atrial. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Though I am happy not to be part of the experimental part, but like data processing, data right? processing or it comes from here, it comes from there, like it is risk and we just like it. <laughs> 
So we will see if we can collaborate even with, with, uh, with the guys there. Uh, the, from my side, the goal of keeping these, these links, even like, like I was thinking of traveling to Chicago this year, is to keep these links with the people, hoping that I settle here, and with the group, the old ones, the new ones, the, uh, uh, everyone who is interested, like, uh, has his part in, in, in like, keeping this running. I mean, higher. So I stop here and I thank you for uh, attending and uh, uh, really happy for the uh, interaction and the question. It was really good for me to uh, present the work and know some good feedback. And hopefully we can have some of this starting um, uh, and we can do some good collaboration. Shukran. Salaam alaikum.